Pat and her musical collaborator, lead guitarist, co-producer, who also happens to be her husband, Neil Giraldo, along with Frank Lynx and Myron Grombacher. Did I pronounce it right? That's right. Got it down. Performing the first single from the LP, Everybody Lay Down. One, two, three, four. Oh. I do have to point out 
that was the best floor I have ever seen perform. We had Ginger Baker performing here on box, but that was the best floor I've ever seen. Really, really good. Quite impressed. Maracas weren't bad either. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I want to ask you something about the last album you did was blues. And you said you, you really wanted to do something different, get away from that. Does it feel kind of good to be back doing the rock and roll? Yeah, it feels great. Did, did, what made you decide, I got to go do that? Which? Going back to, to rock and roll. It was just, it was a nice break and you did it and now you want yeah, to be back to this? Yeah, it was good. It was, uh, you know, we did the blues thing and it was, um, it was really fun. We had a great time and then, you know, you just want to go back there and play that. So. Now this album is called uh, Gravity's Rainbow, but there's no song called Gravity's Rainbow on there. So the title came from? Um, it came from uh, this really interesting book called uh, Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pinchon. So you basically are telling me that you ripped off the title from a book. Yes. Now you know the rest of the story. We're going to continue with Pat Benatar here on The Inside Word. Don't go away. We'll find out what else she's been up to, okay? And we're going to be talking about Gravity's Rainbow. Don't go away. Inside Word. Hi, we're back with more of The Inside Word. I'm Michael Kastner, and I'm talking with Pat Benatar, who's releasing her latest album, Gravity's Rainbow, on June 1st. And that's the album right there. See it? Actually, it's not really the one that's in here because this is a mock-up because it's not out yet. So, no, that's, that's what they do. I, everybody knows that. Somebody said it was really a Don Knotts CD, though, but I don't really believe it. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me ask you about, um, ab about the new album. Seems like the thing to do, don't you think? I think so. Okay, you, you um, co-write or co-do stuff, like produce and everything, with your husband on this, right? And co-write. Do you, does like one do the lyrics and one do the music? How does the whole thing work out? I mostly do lyrics, but it depends. Sometimes music goes with the lyrics at the same time. I mostly do lyrics. He mostly does the musical part. Now, I know this really sounds like really a basic question, but where does, the, where does it come from? I mean, do you see something on TV? Do you wake up? Do you ever wake up with, with lyrics in your head? Yeah. It, it, I don't know. It, it just depends. It, there's no... Uh, there's no set thing that happens. Sometimes you're doing dishes. It needs to be mindless. You need to, like, empty it out. So sometimes when I'm doing dishes and things, I'll get lyrics or driving in the car is good. And you got to, like, free up your head. And <laughs> so whatever doing that the mindless is the key. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you are aware, by the way, we were, uh, when, when you came in, I was really surprised about your hair and everything because I was very used to the image that changed the way women dressed across the country. <laughs> Everybody was dressed like Pat Benatar. For, for years. Did you know that you were going to have that effect? You were going to dress a certain way and then everybody would be copying you? And they picked the worst look that I had to, <laughs> that headband. It was like lasted for 35 seconds. I you know, kept it going for five years. Yeah. No, because I hate clothes. I hate everything about anything like that. So I don't really think about it. I don't care. But what's that like for you if you do come up with something? Like, for instance, a lot of women like dress like Madonna, but she has some real stinkers. I mean, what she comes up with. When somebody copies you, especially in a period that you're really not too happy with, does it kind of bug you that it stays around? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you want to try to forget it as fast as you can, and then it's in your face. And, and then, years later, interviewers <laughs> on TV programs that's bring right. it up over and over and make you squirm in your seat, <laughs> right. you know? That's, that's our job. I want to also uh, ask you about um, some of the stuff on Gravity's Rainbow. You've covered some, uh, some folks like Kate Bush and John Mellencamp. Do you do some covers on this album as well? No, it's all original. Not at all? No. Why, why does somebody do a cover as opposed to an original? You just, you just like a particular song? Or? Yeah, it depends if you, you know, um, sometimes you get on a roll and you've got all the material that you could ever use. You know, you have enough for the next record, too. So uh, all your creative, um, you know, everything that you want to sing gets filled up. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you're, you know, you hear something from somebody else that you really like that you'd like to sing and lyrically something you want to say. So you pick, you know. This time it happened that we had enough for this and it, another one so do you ever listen to a song and go i i can do that better <laughs> yeah and, and who who would you say <laughs> you do that all the time i think everybody does you know now how do you how do you record an album do you have all of this stuff ready to go or do you go in and write it when you're in the studio how does that work for you uh, it's it really it goes from album to album it depends uh lots of times you go in and you have half you know trying to get 10 songs or 12 songs is is not easy and um, especially when you're writing all of them and sometimes you don't go in with everything done and then as it progresses 
you know, you get inspired, it kind of takes on a theme, gets a life of its own, and it starts to just kind of flow. Um, sometimes you go in with nothing. You know, it just depends. And then all the studio bills go up. Yes. And up, and up. <laughs> Your accountant's <laughs> ripping <laughs> what little hair he has left out of his head. Um, you, do, do you have the ability to pick singles? Do you, can you tell, or does somebody else have to do that for you? Do you fall in love with all of the songs? Or do you really know what you want as a single? I don't know. I just, I, I try never to overanalyze what we do. I mean, some songs kind of just jump out. You know, you know, I would never know how to let go in what order, what goes second, you know. I don't know. I love, you know, when you're doing it, it's like a baby. I mean, you love everything about it. You're real attached to every one of them. Every song has a special, you know, meaning, purpose to you. So it's hard, you know, sometimes people pick things and you're, you know, it's, it's not what you would have chosen. So. I could never, I, w I would drive me crazy. Yeah, I mean, I could never read what people would want to hear. You really basically have to concentrate on doing what it is you want to do. Hopefully it's something that they'd like, you know, but you can't let that influence it, I don't think. Well, we know they're going to like your brand new album. It's called Gravity's Rainbow. It is, avail it is available on June 1st. And a free bonus Don Knotts CD That's comes right. with it. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. Don sings. He's crazy. Fish Thank fish you so fish. much for coming by. It's a you. pleasure meeting you. Me and stick around when the Inside Word continues. We are going to be talking with Jerry Van Dyke, who co-stars on ABC's Ratings winner, Coach. He's going to be long right after this.